Okay. This is another one of my pop culture roadshow things where I look at some of the toys and collectibles that I have and try to learn a little something about it. This one is, uh, it actually connects to a lot of the previous ones that I've done. What I noticed was I, I have a lot of books, I have a lot of puzzles, I have a lot of games, and one thing keeps popping up on them, and it's this right here. Whitman Publishing Company, Racine, Wisconsin. And I see that on a lot of books. And what it is, is uh, Whitman Publishing began publishing coin boards. They were the coin with the little round slot in it. You put the coin in and it says what kind of coin it is and you collect your coins that way and share your collections. Whitman was actually a subsidiary of what was known as Western Publishing. It was in Racine, Wisconsin, as I said previously. So I wanted to know more since I live in Wisconsin and I've actually never been to Racine. I don't know why I haven't been to Racine. I I don't even think I know where it is on a map, actually. It was owned by a man named Edward Henry Waitowitz. He worked at the West Side Publishing Printing Company in Racine, Wisconsin. So that's what it was before it was called this, before it was called uh, Western Publishing. Edward was doing books for him or something like that, and turns out the owner couldn't pay him for the work that he did, which seems odd that you can't pay the person doing your books. So what Edward did is he basically offered to buy the, co the company from him and he paid it, he paid him 2,000 some dollars to buy the printing company. So he took it over, his brother was already one of the distributors that worked there, so he went around uh, on his bike uh, selling things to people. Waitowitz was approached by a company that at the time was called Hamming Whitman Publishing Company. Now we'll get back into, that's what this was a Whitman Publishing Company place but this is a different company in Chicago. How did that work? Well, they came to him and said they wanted uh, the Western Printing Company to publish a string of their children's books. And then, and you'll be noticing a theme here, after they printed a bunch of them, it turned out that Hemming Whitman couldn't pay for the books that they just had printed, all the books. So Edward offered to take over their company and he then owned Whitman, Whitman Publishing. He took all of the leftover unsold children's books. Don't know why I'm, I'm waving. It's like I'm getting a plane to come in. And one of the ideas that they got with these prints is they started to create a series called Big Little Books. The first ones that they put out was uh, Dick Tracy. And then another one was Baxter Barney, Barney Baxter. I said that backwards. And they were supposed to be things that kids could carry with them featuring pos popular Western stories and radio personalities of the time. And they also had another one of the series, the original series they put out was Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy, based on the radio show. This one too features illustration and story. And now another thing about Edward is that he was actually a very, I want to say, a humble man. He didn't like to talk about himself, so he didn't do interviews. He would not talk to reporters or newspapers or anything like that who wanted to know about his business or wanted to know about what he did or what he does because he didn't like to talk about himself. So it was very hard. There was nothing about this guy that you could read about for a very long time until later years the company got so big that when he people would pretend to be employees and sneak in and talk to him, not realizing that he was being interviewed. So because of how large the company got, things started to leak out. From that point in 1932, Western Pub, uh, Publishing had procured uh, exclusive book rights for, I had one, Walt Disney books. And they started printing Walt Dis all of Walt Disney's stories and books. And also apparently they put Edward on the board of Disney after doing that and I guess he helped them fund or find the money find the money to fund their first big animated feature Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I did not know that. So he helped them raise money to do this. He also introduced uh, one of the things that I covered in one of my previous stories was I talked about puzzles because during the depression area when they were printing things, they decided to turn their publishing 
place into, uh, they made puzzles. They would make puzzles for people to play because they were getting so popular during the depression so people could play or do things together. Made games for kids. And as you can see, their artwork is always on point because they had artists working for them. So this one is for Donkey Party. I feel like that's titled weird, but uh, it's Pin the Tail on the Donkey made by Whitman Publishing. In the 70s, they also had an agreement with the Children's Television Workshop, which I talked about as well on a previous show, how uh, Golden Books got the exclusive rights to uh, produce Golden Books with the Muppets in them. And I talked about how they had the same artist for a lot of the books in a previous show, and they were able to do, I don't have one of their books here, but they were able to do the stuff for Sesame Street. So they did that in the 70s, and in 76, they uh, created products by mail that also helped fund, like these Betty Crocker order by mail recipes. So you would get these, oops, a lot of people would get, uh, a lot of people's parents had these back then. They're recipes that you would get each week from Betty Crocker in the mail, and you put it in this very hard digging into my chest box. And they would have pictures of a lot of entertainment type foods. It was supposed to be for the family, but I swear all of these, they're uh, arranged by category. fondue stuff, you got favorite family desserts, fondues, crowd size entertaining, Convenient oven meals, outdoor entertaining, hurry up main dishes, impromptu party fair. So they made these as well. Acquired another company called Dell Comics and made comic books for children. Uh, I've got a bunch of these Dell Comics and these are also by Western Publis Publishing in Racine, Wisconsin. At some point they were bought by Mattel and they were able to start working in different types of games like this one called Crazy Ikes where you would get these pieces in a box or in a tube and you would put them together, structure them as your own little, uh, you can make a person out of them or giraffes or whatever other type of stuff you see fit, you make those. But problem was is that Mattel went bankrupt at one point in time and they decided to sell off Western Publishing, and I believe that is how the company shut down. But I did read uh, that a few years back, the building was bought by someone that wants to kind of uh, make a resurgence out of the building, and they're making it into different types of uh, unique office spaces or uh, business spaces. So that is what I learned about all of this Whitman stuff that I have somehow just been seeing and recognizing and collecting. And I wanted to know why I kept seeing Racine, Wisconsin. Anyway, that's all I got. So until next time.